Hi, my name is Claire Timmons and I'm from the University of Strathclyde and today I want to talk about using online escape rooms for summative assessment. Um, throughout this talk I'm going to talk about why I decided to do this, um, how I created my escape room, um, how I actually ran it as a summative assessment. Um, I'd like to give you a wee demonstration of the escape room as well. Um, and then I'm going to talk a wee bit about the kind of main challenges about doing this. And I would like uh, to open it up to you to have a wee think through about um, potential solutions, I guess. Um, and I hope that you can join us in the panel that comes up later today, which I hope to be a part of where we can discuss escape rooms, I guess. So a wee bit more about me. You can see me and you can see that I do not look like this. Um, one of the things that I'm interested in at the moment is the use of generative AI to help with our kind of teaching, learning and assessment tasks. So I asked it to come up with a um, red haired academic, short red haired academic, and it gave me glasses and a suit, um, which is not what I wear. Um, however, I am a senior teaching fellow and I teach on a speech and language pathology program at Strathclyde. This is a four year program and um, it trains students to be speech and language therapists at the end of the degree. Um, because it's an accredited program, um, there's a lot of stuff we have to cover. So there's certain things that have to be done that students have to reach particular competencies. Um, and the area that I work on is probably at that kind of core skill level quite early on in the program where the students are learning about linguistics and phonetics. Um, and I teach across kind of first, second and third year in these areas, um, but it's first year where I probably do a lot more of the kind of innovative changes in relation to teaching particularly. So I'm really interested in creative and innovative uh, methods for teaching and learning, not so much with assessment. So this is quite a new area for me. Um, and uh, I'm interested in sort of more authentic assessments, uh, but something a bit more engaging and moving away from our traditional exams as well. So when I started to hear more about escape rooms, I thought this is interesting. I wonder if I could potentially apply that to some of my teaching content. So this particular, I guess, assessment task then um, I applied to my one of my first year modules, uh, it runs across the whole year, and it's the phonetics module. And phonetics is all about the kind of facts involved in speech production, and um, it's interested in what bits of the body do what when we create speech sounds. So it's very much a kind of descriptive and a type of uh, content and generally assessment. So traditionally, the students would um, have a final year exam um, it would be an invigilated on-campus written exam and they'd be asked questions such as describe their student mechanisms, what is this? Um, and it was quite challenging to try and make them a bit more applied. Um, and But what I was finding was that this was information that I really hoped the students were engaging with earlier on and some of the performances at the end of the first year, uh, the first, the whole academic year, sorry, um, they weren't great. Uh, so my first change was to split that into end of semester one assessment and then an end of semester two. And for that semester one assessment, uh, I thought it might be worth trying something a wee bit different. So I wanted the students to understand that kind of process of speech. So I wanted them to learn about the speech production mechanism, which is um, a kind of journey uh, where we start with the lungs, and we move through to the larynx, which is your throat, and then out to the oral cavity. And that's where we can kind of refine sort of movement. So basically it's all to do with air and the movement of air particles as it goes through um, that particular part of the body. Uh, so I thought this would be ideal for that journey through an escape room that you start in one point and you've got to get through all these different particular stages and get to the end. And ideally at the end of that, the students would know what, how speech is, you know, how it's produced, what's kind of like movement is through the body. Um, so I'm going to introduce you now to Jeffrey. Jeffrey um, here, designed by my daughter and named by my son. I've got a lot of help from others doing this particular task. Um, and it's Jeffrey's journey that I wanted to focus the escape room on. And I wanted the students 
to help Jeffrey travel his way through because he's an air particle and he's stuck in the lungs. So he's trying to make his way out through that speech production mechanism. So he's starting in the lungs and we've got to work out how do we get him to the larynx? What's in the larynx? What happens there? How do we get into the oral cavity? What happens there? And as a kind of end point, I wanted it to be um, that he was making a particular speech sound. And so the kind of point is that he's going to end up being us at the end of this process. So your job as the student is to make sure he can get there. Um, and we had different points then, and the points were linked into the teaching that took place throughout that semester. So what I did then was um, I looked at lots of work from Michelle O'Brien, where she's um, written a lot about using OneNote as an escape room. So from 2021, but also from the presentation um, that was part of the escape room showcase last year. And I developed a kind of, yeah, a 10 room escape room on one note. So each of these rooms uh, is focused on a particular content that we taught over the 10, year, uh, 10 years, 10 weeks of semester one. Um, and the, the information or the tasks that students did were was all linked in to the content from each of these weeks. So with a one note escape room, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, um, you, in order to get to uh, different rooms, you can put passwords in uh, at the start of each room. So if you start on one page, for example, here in the image, you can see welcome to the B6118, which is the module code, you would go in and say, in order to open the next room, you need to put in this password. You click on room one, it asks you to put in the password. And I'll demonstrate that in a second. Um, so the passwords were very much content related. So in order to get the password, you needed the knowledge in order to answer the questions and um, work out the puzzles in order to get to it. Um, once they got to the end, um, there was a final question that can then sort of show that they've escaped from the escape room. So in order to design the rooms, um, I spent a bit of time thinking about um, what sort of tasks that would be there, but I was very much you know, focused on making it sort of fun um, and engaging. So um, be inspiration from, again, last year's Escape Room Showcase, um, Nick Griffin talked about or demonstrated some word puzzles and different word puzzles than I've probably really come across. But that got me thinking about different types of activities I could get the students to do. Um, and it was things like anagrams and riddles. Um, I also went with straightforward questions. Um, so I used some multiple choice questions. Uh, I looked at true sta false statements as well. Um, but anything they did, uh, the, the puzzles and stuff could be complicated, but they had to be related to the teaching content. Um, and the teaching content was linked to the image you can see here, which is a kind of wee snapshot half head of the speech production mechanism. So what you can see in there is you've got the larynx, that big red thing is the tongue, um, and white things are cartilages um, or bones as well that are used. So really important. I didn't want the students to be able to get through the escape room without knowing the content. So I will demonstrate some of the escape room to you, but I can't necessarily give you it to do um, because you need to know the content um, that was being taught, though maybe someone out there um, does know that stuff. So let me know. You can always get in touch and I can send you a link and you can try it out. So in order to help create these puzzles, puzzles I used a couple of external tools. Um, and one of those, which I really liked learning about um, last year, Tim and Haley talked about this with ThingLink. And it's an um, external website where it gives you kind of templates for different sort of word puzzles um, and allows you to adapt these and then you can embed links to your own particular um, task um, or you know, question based activity. So for this one, I did a couple of these. Um, one of the ones the students loved was uh, a flippity wordle where you could put in your word and they could work it out um, and they would link out from the one note get the answer and then back into their one note as well. The other tool I used all the time um, for this was ChatGPT, which is um, a generative AI tool. 
Uh, it's probably the most common one that's used. Um, I think the version I've used is probably developed many, many times since I used it uh, for uh, developing and creating the activities that I wanted the students to do um, as part of this escape room. So um, if you haven't used ChatGPT before, it's a wee bit of a conversation where you can ask it on anything. Right? Um, and it kind of just plucks things out from this massive large language model um, to answer your questions. So I asked it to create me a riddle for com compression. Um, and it did. And it happily said, certainly, and created me a riddle. I then asked it to create me a fun, true or false game about airstream mechanisms. Great, so happy to do that, absolutely, and created me a list of these. Um, though you have to watch with these things, if you've engaged with any generative AI, you know that it needs a wee bit of editing. So often it wasn't actually that right. And I had to go back and just keep on that dialogue with it. And say this isn't correct or <coughs> this should be more specific um, and then it would eventually come up with it and it likes to thank you if you um, highlight its faults as well. So once I'd kind of created these I developed quite a few of different types and um, variety of different puzzles and on reflection some of these worked a lot better than others. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what the escape room looks like. So we can click into it now and it will take you to the welcome page um, of the escape room. So you can see here it is a one note um, laid out with the rooms down the side here and then the blurb about it. So the first welcome page obviously explains a wee bit about what happens. It tells them <coughs> what to do in order to move through the different rooms as well um, and there was a quick start guide that they could also use which would just sort of kind of give them screen grabs of what it looks like when they have to enter the passwords etc so everyone knows what they're about to do and um, if they go back to the welcome page the first thing they get is instructions about the password and here you have the password to unlock room one is the manner of the consonant shh sound the hint they're given here is just the number of letters in that word, um, and it's all capitals. Now, they can't enter the password there, those of you that have used one not to know that. But if you click on the room, you'll see it's password protected. Click there, and it'll ask you to enter. So the answer for this is fricative. And this allows us in. So each page when the students got to it would have Jeffrey at the top. Um, and a wee bit of blurb to give you the context of where we are in Jeffy's journey. So currently he's lingering around the depths of the human body. And here you hear he's stuck in the lungs and he really wants to be a part of this set. So we're going to have to help him out. And the first one here is a straightforward question um, based on some of the teaching content. What is the initiator of the pulmonic airstream mechanism? They get, again, they'll get the number of letters, but what I've done here is add in a hint. So you can see you drag your mouse over the line and they just have to drag over and it's white text and it, it will tell them what it is. So the answer to this is, potentially you know, all know this one, which is the diaphragm. So we would put this in, I'm going to show this because this is one of these words where I often manage to misspell. Click in here and here we get again, Jeffrey responds, thanks very much. So we now know the diaphragm is going to start affecting the lungs and that's going to move the lungs. But we want to consider then how that's going to move out. So they, they're given a few tasks. Here we have a riddle. This is one of the hardest ones, actually, to be fair. Um, I'm tight and snug, not a bit of slack, squeezing the air in the room to go back, reducing lungs, yet holding much within. What am I puzzle you need to begin? This is all chat GPT. Um, it took a couple of times to work it out. Um, this hint was, again, very much based on the knowledge they should have if they weren't going to get it. If they were still struggling, um, they had more. But again, it was trying to pull in some of that teacher knowledge. So things like voices feel plosive. They know that through the content that's being taught. So the hints were trying not to be too blunt, I guess, with this. So for this page here, you've got the first letter of number one's answer. So that would be our C and either the A, B or C of the correct answer here is the password for room three. So straightforward, multiple choice with um, a, a riddle at the top there. So the password here was C and A. I'll just um, 
see that and that takes us into the next room okay it's not a c and b right so then we again here's jeffrey again um but he's needing a wee bit more help so he needs a bit of direction so we have things like a puzzle here where they've got to get the answer. Um, and this is very much based on the knowledge, this puzzle um, is to do with the signs and the words, not um, the letters. Um, and here we have a link to the flippity one. So um, they would just need to click out and that would take you to this here and they would have to type in the word they think it is. Um, not that if you know Wordle, um, and that gives us that there. Jump back into the escape room, and that creates part of their password going forward. Um, and then they can move on to the next page, put in the password, and here we get in. So Jeff has been enthusiastic, saying good work. We now know he's making his way up the trachea. Yeah, that's going to take us up to the larynx. And the questions are a bit around the larynx as well. So talking about the vocal folds, things that happen in the larynx. So hopefully you can see that each thing was trying to lead into the content that the students were learning as well. Okay, we're gonna get rid of that now. I'm gonna take you back to some of the other things that took place in terms of actually um, running the exam. So I set it up, but I also wanted to make sure it worked. So I did a bit of piloting. So I asked a couple of colleagues who um, know that content. So they've either taught it in the past or they've been taught it as well. Um, and asked them to work through it. The comments were generally the same, but there would be bits that they found to be too hard. So I had to change some of the questions that were there. Um, and also they were able to point out things about the instructions being too complicated. And that might have been in relation to working out the passwords, but also navigating through the escape room as well. In terms of running the exam, um, it, I did it in the exam's condition. So it was an on-campus timed exam. It was quite challenging to work out how long to make it because I obviously took a certain amount of time to complete it. Um, it was hard to then think about the hints that might be provided, um, piloting on people who knew it. Um, so we kind of just gave an hour, um, but we booked the rooms out along, uh, sort of beyond that. So if it did end up taking longer, we had a bit of space to work with. Um, I wanted it to be quite relaxed, but I also wanted the students to be able to discuss things. I didn't want them to be sitting panicking. I wanted them to learn off each other to talk a wee bit about the puzzles, because sometimes the puzzle was the issue, not necessarily the content. So I had them working in pairs. So it was quite a relaxed environment. Um, there was invigilators. We wanted to make sure they weren't accessing notes or going where they shouldn't online. Um, but the invigilators also had a role of providing hints. So you'll have seen on uh, the demonstration, there were hints that were provided, but I also had additional ones. So there were kind of stages of hints if they were seen to be struggling. They had the hint that they could highlight. And then they had the invigilator hint. So this was a bit of work from the invigilators just to see if they were really struggling to be able to provide some other tips. If that didn't work, then it kind of came down to me um, as the person running the exam uh, to kind of judge how far I could go with the hints. This is where it's getting a wee bit complicated and a bit fuzzy is what was acceptable. So all the invigilators got a guide which would say this is the hints they will get and this is what you can provide. Now, as you might expect, the students loved this. They thought it was the best fun that they'd ever had in an exam. Um, but kind of constructively, they said that it was quite easy to navigate. And um, they thought the puzzles and the content was as challenging as they would expect. They thought it was the right level and they enjoyed it much more than sitting in a hall um, and writing down, much more engaging, um, which is good. So the students had a great experience and I enjoyed making it, but one of the biggest challenges here is running it as a summative assignment um, and marking it. So for this uh, kind of first run through it, um, obviously I provided students with hints, but I did it until they managed to access the passwords. Um, so that they could all get through it. Um, and at the end of once they got through all the rooms, they were given a final question, which was kind of their submission. So uh, that went into our VLE and that would allow them to get the pass mark. Because of the hints, 
everyone passed. Um, so nobody could fail in this. Um, and that's maybe a bit of a challenge. Um, I was hoping that telling the students they could revise would give them engaged with the information. But when they do it and find out they can't fail, what happens when word spreads and students don't revise? So I'm a bit stuck at the moment. My solution that currently I'm thinking is, do they have a grade and they remove mark for hints or do I just not make it summative? Um, um, so something to think about and hopefully you can, but I'm going to finish off here. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you've enjoyed learning about Jeffrey and his journey through the speech production mechanism. Thank you.